quitting. You can't quit. All right, so here's the deal, everyone. Mario is super, super spicy because he bought body mics. We've had body mics, these little tiny microphones that you'll see right there. We've had them for w weeks. How long have you had these? Months. Months. Ever since the, um, I can't <clears throat> remember the name. Someone made a suggestion you guys should get those. And I said, oh, not a bad idea. Yeah. So Mario purchased them, right? And we could never get them to work. Just nothing we could do. And whenever you're filming on different devices, for those of you who don't know, the Correct. three... What? I could never get them to work. Okay. Paul was never involved in them working. I had this. nothing to do with this. Well, Mario bought these, couldn't get them to work. So, all right, well, we'll figure it out. No big deal. And then after a while, you know, we had heard a couple comments. We went through the rain week, and I was like, we got to get these things rolling. Yes. That was that was important. Like, do we need an adapter? What do we need? All right, so we got them rolling. Um, I asked Mario to bring them today. He's like, Paul, we're wasting our time here. I've done this a million times. I'm like, it's okay. It's okay. And we figured it out together. It was teamwork. I'm an idiot. <laughs> Don't forget to hit, ah, good job. <laughs> All right, I've got a topic, are you ready? Stronger arm, Peter Allen. No, no. <laughs> Number two cornerback this season, who's it gonna be? There's a variety of options here. Uh, I'm gonna go with Wrangler, I mean Levi. I'm gonna go with Levi. <laughs> no, I, I, th I, like, uh, I like Levi, but, they went out and got a first round corner from Houston. Kevin who's, Johnson. Who's oft injured. Yep. Teron Johnson. They I, got Lewis. No, I'm just giving I'm just giving yeah. you a, a let, let rundown. Now, for the same reason we may say for Robert Foster, even though we're both high on Foster. Yep. For the same reason we may say a Foster is only good enough for a six and ten team, mm -hmm. or maybe only good enough for a six and ten team, was Levi Wallace good because of A, the guys around him, or B He's good for a 6-10 and 10 team. I think it's a little different when you examine the defense because they were second overall. Right, yeah. It's so huge thinking of that. that I'm, I, I'm, I'm with your logic there because I do agree that it is different, right? Mm -hmm. So when you talk about the offensive portion, um, you do have to question, okay, the guys that they found, are they good enough for, for a 10-6 ten and, a, a ten and six team versus 6-10? and 10? On defense, it is not the same conversation. No, it's not. It's not. No. So, who do you like for the number two cornerback job? Who do you think wins the job out of training camp? I think, now, well, let me ask you this. Before I get to my answer, let me yeah. ask you this. Is it an open competition for CB2? Yeah. Or I think, is it Levi's to lose? No, I think it's open. Okay. All right. That being said, do you think that Kevin Johnson is your starter? No. I don't. You think it's Levi? No, I don't. Really? No, I think it's EJ Gaines. Whoa. He's coming back into the system. I think Whoa. I think Gaines has, has is on equal footing with Wallace because he's coming back into the system. And EJ was really good when he was healthy. And that was always the deal was, is he going to be healthy? I don't think that stops him from winning the job because you know Wallace can come in if you need him. He's done. He did it last year. A lot of it's, a lot of it's rhythm, though. A lot I of agree. it for corners. you got to see how the guy's running his route. How I the agree. Guy, what do you do this route, that route? And sometimes the guys will try to set up certain guys. Oh, God, I forgot about Gaines. But it, it just begs the question because I'm of the proponent that if the Bills are not sold on anybody, it's the same. It, see, how, here's how the defense gets so affected by everything going on. If the Bills are not sold on anybody being the Sam linebacker and they plan on running a lot of nickel packages, okay, what does that mean? You have your defensive rotational front. Let's say Lorenzo starts at Sam linebacker. Then you want to drop him down to defensive end or defensive tackle. Right. You want to roll Hyder Poyer down in the box. Right. That leaves a safety position open. I always thought you could put Kevin Johnson back there, Raphael Bush, Dean Marlowe, whoever they have on the team. Mm -hmm. But if... If you're thinking about preserving Kevin Johnson, who's been an off-injured cornerback, he's a first-round talent, you put him at safety to cover. So now you have three cornerbacks, essentially, of the four defensive backs huh. that are corners. Right. You'll have Levi, Kevin, and Trey. And then you'll have Hyder Poirier as the other safety being on there. Mm -hmm. That's one. Because we always said, how do you extend a tackle's career? You move him down to guard. Cordy Glenn being a perfect example yep, now. They're moving him in the guard. They're moving him in the guard. Now, the other, the other point of that is this. What do you want to do when you want to extend a 
defensive backs career. You move him from corner to safety. Yeah. Okay. Look at Champ Bailey. Yeah. Champ Bailey did it. Charles, Charles Woodson Charles did it. it. All right. How cerebral can Kevin Johnson be, number one? Number right. two, you drafted a in-the-box safety, not a coverage safety. Right. All right? So that just tips your hand a little bit how that's going to be. But then you're three battling in camp then for you. Mm-hmm. That's just my perspective on how this defense may roll. Yeah. All right? I'm, I'm perfectly, perfectly content with if you want to go nickel, you have Milano and Edmonds. And you have Hyde and Poyer, mm-hmm. Trey, Teron, and Kevin and or Levi and yep. or, you know what I mean, EJ. So you you got EJ Gaines, Levi Wallace, and Kevin Johnson right. fighting it out for CB2. Mm-hmm. I think it's a fascinating conversation. Yeah. I mean, I really think Teron Johnson entrenched himself as the slot corner last season because he played great. He did awesome. He played great. And I, I don't think there's much of a conversation there. Um, I mean, could you put? I wouldn't put EJ in, in, in EJ Gaines to cover the slot. But I think Kevin Johnson, somebody you could put in to cover the slot. Um, he's pretty. He's pretty quick. So I mean, you could put him there. Um, I don't think Levi Wallace profiles in the slot very well, if you ask me. No. Um, he's more of an outside cover guy. Right. So I'm, that opens up the opportunity when they go four wide. Kevin Johnson is your other slot corner, if, if you ask me. Right. So I'm with you where you talk about that nickel coverage, right? Because, yes. again, the Bills are going to play a lot of nickel. And I like the idea of sliding Kevin Johnson back to safety because, again, you're just if you're going single high and you're in nickel, you're just asking him to cover anyway, so that's fine. Mm-hmm. Um, however, for that CB2 job, I really foresee EJ Gaines being the guy because they, made, they did make a small effort to get him, right? He left for, on a one-year deal, got no money, he thought we thought he was going to be one of the top two or three corners on the market, and everybody looked at his injury history and said, "We're not touching this. We're not touching this guy. We're not doing this." And then here we are. EJ Gaines is back, and in the same system that he was really effective in last season. So I I have to say EJ Gaines is going to win that CB two job. Um, maybe I'm wrong. Maybe I'm reading that wrong. I think a lot of fans forget that EJ Gaines is back. A lot of fans have written him off as being injured already. High possibility that by the time we release this video, that he is not, he is no longer healthy. You, you tell me, right? You, so you think, who, who? Because I, I heard you in your nickel coverage. You named all three corners. So who do you think is the number two corner? Oh God, it's so. Now I think a lot of people, I, I don't want to say falsely. Mm-hmm. What the hell was that? I don't, know. I don't know. I think a lot of people falsely will just look at PFF grades. And say, all right, Levi's yeah. just CB2. Right. But what did he yeah. do last year that stood out? Well, the whole defense was phenomenal. Yeah. And I believe it's going to be a dogfight for the CB2 because you got to feel anyone who gets in that role is going to benefit from Oliver up front. Right. Without yeah. blitzing. Yep. Yeah. Right, we don't have to blitz, We don't, which means you don't have to play a lot of man. Right. Which means if you don't have to play a lot of man, zone's a lot easier to cover. Right. Just like an offensive lineman, they would rather run block than pass block. It's a lot easier. Yep. Yeah. Uh, so the CB2, I think by default, I think it would have to be Wallace. However, I like Gaines better in the slot more than you do. Okay, why? Just because I think he's more physical at the line. Okay. I, I just think I, he's more I physical. I agree with you there. Um, yeah. I, I, Wallace is not – because usually when you have two cornerbacks, you'll have a CB1, CB2. No one's arguing Trey White's a CB1. He's right. your cover guy. Yeah. He's going to take out the number one. Number two is usually, I don't know, I don't want to say not as fast, but if you're going up against Cleveland this year, let's say this, you're going up against Cleveland. You have to you have to formulate a game plan against Cleveland. You have Beckham, mm-hmm. Landry, Higgins, Njoku. Yep. How are you covering them for, let's say you, you're blitzing in this down, you're sending Milano and Edmonds. Yep. Who's covering who in those? And that will determine I, what your so CB1, ideal CB2. Situa- so ideal situation, um, Trey is on Odell. EJ okay. Gaines is on Landry. Ooh. Because those two will beat the hell out of each other. How many lot. times do you think that happened last year, though? I wouldn't put Gaines anywhere near Landry. I would because they practice they practice against each that's other. That's what I'm saying. They know how to beat each other. Mm. I don't know about that. Like, that's the Ooh. thing. Okay, that's a that's a fascinating that's a fascinating take. I would put EJ. Now this is going to sound insane, but the most dangerous guy I feel is Landry. But the most dangerous deep threat is Odell. Right. 
I put Trey White on Landry. I put Gaines or and or Wallace. On, I oh, put no. I put I put Gaines I put Gaines on Higgins. Okay. Okay. I put Levi on Odell, but I put uh, Hyde over the top. Right, but we've seen Odell get frustrated with physical corners before. Okay, Levi can play physical. I think he can play physical with him. But if you want to put Gaines on on, uh, on Odell, he would just punch just, him in the face. Yeah. yeah. Who's the most physical corner, you think? Are, are we excluding Trey White out of all these discussions because we're only talking CB2? You know what I mean? Because yeah. like, if you want to talk about who's I don't the think, best coverage think, guy, it's going to be yeah, White. Yeah, I don't think Trey is physical compared to Gaines. Okay. I don't think Trey's as physical as Gaines. Okay. But, you know, from a dynamic standpoint, maybe we don't see a CB2. Maybe we see matchups. Maybe that's what we see. But again, quarterback is a rhythm position. You mentioned it before. But how many times do we see teams go too wide? We don't. Teams don't go too wide anymore. So there's I, yes, opportunities yes, for players yes. to be out there. So I'm very that's curious. That's why nickel sub package so many right, times. Right, but that's what I mean. I'm very curious if the Bills play match up with that CB2 position at the beginning of the season, rotating between Wallace and Gaines because they're the incumbents. We know that. I mean, I'm treating Gaines like an incumbent because he was on the team two years ago in McDermott's first season. But it's the same system. So I, I am under the assumption that the incumbents get the preference. Because yeah. McDermott has shown that. That's how. Yeah, that's how he is. And it, it's not a. It's not a. It, it's not a bad decision, because if you know where the defense is going to be every down, mixing it up is not a bad deal for you. Right. And they they often mix it up, and that's what what's is, what has made them so successful. But it's interesting to me how your opinion of the offense mirrors your opinion of the defense. What do you mean? Your opinion of the offense is you want one stud wide receiver and a bunch of knuckleheads. Now. Your, your defensive back room, you want one stud cover guy and a bunch of knuckleheads. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> What is with you? Well, because on the defense, they have an idea what they're doing. On offense, everybody just goes, eh. I would. <laughs> <laughs> I would take four CB2s. I would take four. I agree. That I agree with. I agree with that. I would take four CB2s because this defense has an identity. I get that. Oh, yes. God. Stop yes. it. Stop it. What do you mean, stop it? Stop it. Why would you need four CB2s? Because what's the most dangerous on offense? Four wide receiver twos. Oh, stop. No, that is not true at all. <laughs> These are not mutually exclusive. No, stop. no, no. Stop it. No, no. Stop it. Um, that, is, that is hilarious, though, how that just... My name's Brian. I coach touchdowns. <laughs> that's, that's how I think of Brian, dude. Because in the comment <laughs> section, instead of people calling him Dable, a couple of people just started calling him Brian. I was like, oh, that's so much better. It totally juvenile. Yeah, it oh. makes him. It makes him sound like a juvenile. You know, that's perfect. It's perfect. funny how we always reference everybody, and uh, <laughs> it's almost like a CSI episode. You ever know, ever notice they never use their first names ever? <laughs> I know Taylor, except, except Dan. Yeah, D- Dan. Dan in the comments section, just, like, just call me Dan. Just call me Dan. Spence, Vic Spence. Yep. I know when you're about to make your point. Just to kind of wrap this up. Yeah. I know when you're about to make your point of something I said that was stupid when you mm. use my name. You never use my first name. No. No, seriously, Mar. What's going to happen is... Yeah. And yeah. I never use yours. No. 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 Just like in a marriage. Oh, God. When when your wife calls you by your first name, you know something's wrong. Nah. That's not how it works in my house. True story. My <laughs> wife... Head. Take the trash <laughs> out. True story. My wife broke our television... This is this was a little while ago. It was one of the few times I I used her name in front of the kids. I just was it a scream? Was it a yelp? It was it was a cry for help. Is what it was. Was it a barbaric yelp? Well, she threw a toy through the television. So that what? Was, it's a long story. <laughs> it's, <laughs> Substitute toy for my phone. <laughs> <laughs>